Hello beauties, I have like very um, 90s braid hair kind of going on right now. It's my post-workout hair. Um, I have a tutorial for you today on this eye look. I wish I would have done this before Thanksgiving, but I did not. But I did post a picture on Instagram and ask you guys if you still wanted to see it, and you said yes you did, so I'm giving you what you are asking for. It's actually using a limited edition MAC pigment, but if you don't have any MAC pigments in your life, I de definitely recommend going and checking them out. Maybe add one to your Christmas wish list this year of any color that you love or that you feel really complements your skin, your eyes, your hair, whatever you wanna do with your makeup life. It's up to you. So as per usual, if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. I hope to see you all very soon in my next video. Let's go ahead and get on to this tutorial. As usual, starting with a eyeshadow primer. This one is from Wet n Wild. It's super inexpensive. It does have kind of like a sticky feel, so if you don't like that, you probably wouldn't like this. Next, I'm moving on to a Makeup Forever matte palette, and I'm going to be using a white shade and just dusting that all over my eyelid as kind of a base. Since this primer is sticky, I like to put an initial shade all over, just so that once we go and put other shades, it doesn't stick to any areas strangely. You have two options here. You can either continue to use this palette if you have it and use that kind of mauve shade, or you can pull in any other eyeshadows that you have. This one that I have next to it is from Anastasia. You use whatever you have and you feel works best for your transition color. This transition shade is super important. You guys see me do this all the time in my tutorials, and I do mix up the shades that I'm using, but you just wanna have that initial color right in the crease that's going to kind of let you know where the crease of your eye is, and it's going to help blend everything out better as you move along. Now I'm gonna be taking some tape and placing that on the outer corners of my eye, and then I'm taking this gorgeous burgundy purple, and I'm going to be putting this right on the outer corner. I don't always use tape with darker shades, especially if I haven't put my foundation on first First, which I have not today, but I find that it helps me to really pack on the color without kind of being afraid because I have that extra support system. So if you feel like you are afraid to play with darker colors, like this super intense dark gray here, put some tape on the outer corner and just go for it. Just see how it, that kind of helps you maybe um, move past the fear of dark colors and embrace them and bring them into your eyeshadow looks. So, and as usual, we are building up a ten intensity as we go along. You generally see that I start with a little bit of color and then go back in with my brush and pick up more just because I like to see what works best for my pale skin. Now I'm going to be blending with a huge fluffy blending, blending brush. One of my secrets is if I feel like I have too much darkness up going towards my eyebrows, I will take a white shade and a fluffy blending, blending brush and knock that down a peg or two. Now I'm going to be taking a matte black. As I said, we're starting with lighter shades and building up an intensity. And obviously once you get to that black, it's like boom dark, intense eyeshadow. Now, I am going to be using a MAC glitter. There are other options like pressed pigments. I'm going to be using both of these actually because I feel like this glitter isn't completely opaque and I really need a base for it to uh, kind of start with so that that color ends up peeking through the glitter. This Makeup Forever pig pressed pigment is just gorgeous. Works phenomenally phenomenally on its own, especially if you use MAC Fix Plus. Now I'm using a glitter primer. This is from LA Splash. It's super sticky and it really helps the glitter adhere to the eyelid. I'm also using MAC Fix Plus to uh, really make that stick to the brush so that I can actually get it to my eye without it falling everywhere. Glitter is fun and it looks gorgeous on the eye, but it is a pain to work with. Comment down below if you think that glitter is gorgeous, but it is really, really difficult to work with because I feel that way too, guys. As you can see, I have like this blue piece underneath my eye. That's actually a post-it note, just a little, little suggestion if you're playing with glitter and you want to kind of somewhat prevent a little bit of fallout. Uh, there's always gonna be fallout with glitter. That's just the, the nature of the texture. Uh, now I'm going to be putting an Anastasia pressed pigment in the inner corner to really enhance that area, but not uh, make it that kind of coppery color that we're working with, make it a little more, a little more neutral. I'm just moving on to my normal eye routine, tight lining with a black liner and making sure that everything looks blended. If you are ever unsure if it looks blended, go in for more blending. That's my tip to you. 
Now I'm not going to do any liquid liner here uh, because I feel like the, the glitter is intense enough and also if you try to put liquid liner over uh, glitter it tends to just kind of move it around and create more fallout. So did not do that but I'm going in with my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara and applying a few coats of mascara. Now I'm going to be going in with the CoverGirl Clump 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 <laughs> That's really hard to say. CoverGirl Clump Crusher Mascara. Now to prime the skin, I'm going to be using my Josie Moran Argan Oil Priming Lotion stuff. Secret with this is less is more. I've used way too much of this on my skin and it ends up looking super bad, really cakey and not glowy or moisturized at all. So less is more and I highly recommend using a brush. Now I'm going to be using the Urban Decay all nighter foundation I think that's what this is called I have the shade number two and as per usual I am dotting that all over my skin this is kind of my my way that I like to apply foundation you do you however you feel your skin looks best and however you feel your best go ahead and apply your foundation like that I'm going to blend this out with the Beauty Blender because it is quite heavy coverage. I have very dry skin, so whenever I use a foundation that is even slightly dry or super high coverage, I must use the Beauty Blender. This is my tool of life. I bring it with me everywhere. If I am in a situation where I have to do someone else's makeup or my own makeup and I don't have this, it makes me deeply sad. So therefore, you know, it is a number one tool. It is a little bit yellow and it looks a lot more yellow on camera. It did end up kind of toning down and end up working with my skin tone, but as you can see or not see on the camera, I am bringing that down onto my neck as well. Now for concealer, I am using the NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer. Just made sure that I blended everything together so that there wasn't any wonkiness. Uh, like I said, it does look much more orangey yellow on camera than it does in person. And then I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer to conceal all those little wonky bits that I have on my skin. I don't have any active pimples at the moment in this video, but I do have so much scarring. So, so much scarring, guys. I don't know. I think it might just be that I'm so pale that scars show up even more on my skin. If you have this similar issue, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know I'm not alone. Next, for some face framing, I am going to do my eyebrows. I was always the person that never did my eyebrows in high school, and I feel like brows weren't a super big thing when I was growing up because I grew up in the 90s, but I was in you know high school in the 2000s, so I feel like the brows, I, for me, weren't talked about a whole lot. So, But a few years ago, I started filling them in, and it is seriously a life-changing adventure. When you first get them done and you see the color, it's terrifying, but at the same time, you're like, wow, I look like a different person. And I feel like even when I have minimal makeup on and I do my eyebrows, I'm like, oh my goodness, I actually look like I have more shape to my face and it's not just a circle. <laughs> So the product that I'm using here today is the Makeup Forever Precision Brow Pencil. I've talked about this in a favorites video, in an empties video, and a haul video. It is one of my favorite brow pencils. I highly recommend it. Link will be in the information bar. And then I'm going to set with the Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel in Caramel, which you have seen me use since the very start of my brow adventure. So I decided to try something a little different today. And I don't know if it worked all that well for me. I'm taking this MAC little palette that I have and using this, I think it's, I'm going to have to link it down below because I cannot remember the specific name of it, but it was a little too light for as dark as this foundation was. So I went in with my Pure Mineral Powder and I dusted that all over my skin to hopefully blend all of my mix mash of colors together. But makeup is fun. It washes off even if it doesn't look fantastically, beautifully perfect how you want it to look. It's not the end of the world, I promise you. Now I'm going to contour, and I'm using my new favorite Fiona Style Contour Palette. This is the Sheer sheer Sculpting Palette. I feel like I've had a lot of alliterations going on here today. So it is the Fiona Style Sheer Sculpting Palette, and I'm using that to contour my skin. This palette is amazing, especially if you're Casper colored like this girl over here is. I am taking a small Elysium brush and just contouring my skin with these amazing, amazing powders. 
Next, I'm going to bronze up the skin with my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette that I talked about in my recent favorites video and haul video. I really, really am getting some great use out of this palette. It is gorgeous and I feel, feel very luxurious when I use this product and I love makeup items like that. I'm using a Real Techniques brush to blend everything out. And then I'm going to use a blush. I wanted to use something that wasn't super in your face since the eyes are what I want to be in your face when you see me. So I'm using that Hourglass palette and I'm using definitely the lighter shade of the two just to give my cheeks a nice little flush. I've always been, since I started really getting into makeup, somebody that has to wear blush. I can't, I can't finish my look without blush. Now I'm going to go into this Maybelline contouring palette that I got months and months and months ago. And this highlighting color is really, really fantastic. So I'm using that on my skin today. On to the lips. You could definitely do something super neutral if you just wanted the eyes to be the center focus. However, I'm kind of obsessed with dark lips and I feel like this combination really worked together. But again, if you're somebody who's more min minimalistic, even if you're using glitter, um, definitely go for something nude. But I wanted to go for something red today. So I'm first starting with an, a lip liner. This is one of the new Makeup Forever lip liners. And I will have a swatch video up of all of the new ones very soon. But they actually just sent me some new new ones. So I will also have a video up on those super soon as well. Now I'm going to go into a L'Oreal lip palette and go into this super dark vampy color. I feel like the combination of the red and this kind of rich vamp burgundy-ish shade worked really, really well together. It kind of added this ombre look, kind of, a little bit, maybe. I'm trying. I like these lip palettes because they offer versatility, but they do not last that long on your lips, so don't go into them thinking that it's going to be some kind of long-wearing lip product, because it's really not. I feel like I've done a lot of whispering to you in this video today. I'm gonna enhance that color on my inner tear duct a little bit more because I really like that to pop and then match everything that I did on the upper lid uh, on my lower lash line. I normally do that when I have the tape on sometimes, but I just felt like doing everything and then making that kind of the final piece that wraps everything together today. Take your time with this part and use a brush that isn't too big or isn't too small because this really is going to bring everything together and make the look look super complete. I'm gonna set my skin with some setting spray from Makeup Revolution as well as a little bit of MAC Fix Plus. This is also gonna really help to lock in that glitter as well. And that's the finished look. I did also put some mascara on my lower lashes and I am super happy with the way this came out. Let me know in the comments down below if you are as well. And I hope to see you very, very soon in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.